So what is the best initiative system in an RPG? Take a few minutes before combat to roll and write down results, alternating turns or something else entirely. In this video I'll go through some of the things that I think are important for initiative systems in RPGs and I'll synthesize that to create the best, ultimate initiative system to rule them all. You ready? Let's roll. Before we can devise the ultimate initiative system, we need to understand why we have initiative in the first place. For me, initiative systems in RPGs do a few important things. Initiative systems can define turn order, but not every game has a defined turn order and not every game needs one. If there is a set order for turns, for example one that's determined by rolling at the start of combat, then an initiative system can make sure that everyone knows when their turns are, as well as everyone else's. This can help players prepare for their next turn. It can also add to tactical depth and help players make decisions. For example, let's say you're playing a bard in D&D and you're fighting against the big bad. You know they're low on hit points and you also know that they're about to finish a summoning ritual if they're not incapacitated before their next turn. In this scenario you might want to give your bardic inspiration die to the barbarian that's going to go before the big bad rather than the fighter that's going to go after. This can help maximize your chances to defeat the big bad before they get to take their turn and summon more enemies. This kind of thing is typical turn-based video game logic and well, I've played a lot of Baldur's Gate 3. As a general rule, crunchier games with a bigger focus on tactics include a set turn order. This includes every edition of D&D and Pathfinder. If a game has no set turn order, then the GM or the players typically decide who goes next. One way to do this is with alternating turns, like in Star Trek Adventures. Players and the GM take it in turns to activate whichever player or NPC they want to, and initiative alternates between the players and NPCs, but each actor can only take one turn each round. Another approach is a system without rounds, like in Daggerheart. Every time there's a player turn, the players decide who goes, and every time there's an adversary turn, the GM decides which adversary goes. But there are no rounds and every actor can take a very different number of turns. Systems without a set turn order typically provide fewer tactical options, but they do provide them. Getting the choice of who goes next and in which order to take turns provides some tactical depth. In the scenario we discussed with the big bad about to summon reinforcements, if you get to choose who goes next and the fighter is the most likely to deal the most damage, and choosing to let them take their turn next could be a smart tactical decision for the party. Initiative systems can support game balance, and initiative and game mechanics should form a functioning whole. In D&D, some abilities last for a specific duration, and some conditions can be recovered from if a successful save is made at the start or end of an actor's turn. These mechanics are balanced by the fact that no actor can take more than a single turn for each turn taken by other actors. If a player could choose to take multiple turns in a row, then they'd have a good likelihood of recovering from their condition. I imagine this is part of the reason why Legend legendary actions work the way they do in D&D. They let powerful creatures take additional actions without letting them take additional turns. I'm not a game designer, but my intuition is that it's harder to balance effectively if you don't have rounds in a game, and actors can take significantly more or less turns than other actors. In Daggerheart's initiative system, there are no rounds and turns don't always alternate. Players start with initiative, and the GM only gets to take initiative if a player is unlucky on their roll. This can lead to big swings in a combat. If players never get an unlucky roll, they could quickly steamroll the combat while players keep taking turns and adversaries sit back and wait. A GM can take initiative from the players by spending fear tokens, but that's the same currency the GM needs to raise the tension in other ways, so balance is still affected. You can get the same issue in a system where initiative is rolled, like D&D, if one side is much luckier on their initiative roll than the other, but at least every actor will get to take a similar number of turns. Initiative systems can affect player attention on the game. While I think it's a little rude for players not to maintain attention on a game, some players may lose attention, especially if it's a while between each of their turns. In a system with a defined turn order, a player knowing that their turn is about to come up may help them maintain attention. As a GM or DM, you could use various tools to support this. Having a clear initiative tracker that everyone can see, such as an inbuilt tracker on a VTT, or a physical tracker on the table, can help. If you're playing at the table, you could also make things even easier by having initiative go clockwise or anti-clockwise around the table, as is common in board games. I'm not sure if systems where players choose who goes next make it easier or harder for players to maintain attention on the game. This may depend on the player and how often they can convince the other players to let them take a turn. Initiative systems can help make sure that everyone gets the chance to contribute. 
There's nothing worse in an RPG for me than a combat where I'm excited to take a turn and I never get to. In D&D with the standard rules, this situation should be really rare and would only crop up due to poor encounter balancing. If a battle is likely to last less than a single round, then I'd argue that you shouldn't go into initiative in the first place and resolve it in some other way. In the standard rules for Daggerheart, it may be much more common that players don't get to take a turn, as players always choose who gets to take the next turn. If a player finds it hard to speak up and convince the other players to let them take their turn next, they may regularly get to take fewer turns in combat. That's fine if they don't mind that, but I know that I'd rather everyone contribute as evenly as possible in a game. In this system, the initiative system itself doesn't arbitrate fairness. That's left up to the players or the GM. An initiative system can help maintain and emphasise tension during combat. Or, if done poorly, it can make the tension melt pretty quickly. I don't know about you, but I get really excited when a battle starts. I look forward to the tactical options that I'll be presented with and the chance to pit my adversaries against my players or test my character's skills. Yeah, I might be a bit of a power gamer, but when does combat actually start? In D&D, is it when the DM asks players to roll initiative? Or is it five minutes later when they've noted down initiative scores and set the turn order? That's a lot of time for the tension to melt. Systems with alternating player and NPC turns like Star Trek Adventures can help maintain tension. In this system, turns always alternate between players and the GM, and the GM always gets to decide which NPC will go next. This lets the GM maintain the tension throughout the combat. If a player has just attacked an NPC, then the GM can decide to activate that NPC next. This doesn't just help with tension, but also the sense of flow. This is similar in Daggerheart, but turns don't always alternate between players and adversaries. An initiative system can help give players and the GM a sense of intrigue in the game. That sometimes scary, but often fun feeling of, I don't know what's going to happen next. If you don't know who's going to take the next turn, that's intriguing. If you have to roll for initiative, that's intriguing in the moment as you don't know if you'll go first, last, or somewhere in between. But if that roll determines the turn order for the rest of the combat, then no more intrigue. Maybe the most intriguing system would be one that has rounds, and where every actor that hasn't taken a turn that round needs to roll to determine who goes next. Very intriguing, but that's a whole load of rolling, so I wouldn't recommend it. There's a trade-off between tactical options and intrigue. Knowing when each actor is going to take a turn can add a lot of tactical depth to a game, but that comes at the expense of intrigue. So now we've discussed some of the important things that an initiative system can contribute to a game, how do we synthesize that to come up with the best, ultimate initiative system? Well, this depends on your taste, but if I were to design a game, maybe I'd make the initiative system something like this. The game has rounds where each actor takes one turn in every round. Turns always alternate between players and adversaries. If there are more players or adversaries, then extra turns get taken at the end of the round before the next one begins. If a player or adversary gets downed, then the other players or adversaries move forward in initiative, so that turns always alternate at the beginning of a round. To add a sense of intrigue, the players won't know when each adversary is going to take their turn in the first round of combat until they've taken it. Instead, the GM gets to decide, which means that they can manage a player action with an adversary reaction and maintain tension. After that though, to support crunchiness, the turn order will be set and will only change if actors get downed. If new actors enter the combat on either side, they'll be added to the end of the current initiative order. So who goes first? Well, we want to reduce admin during the game and maintain tension by being able to jump straight into combat, so we'll sort all of this out before the game begins. The GM rolls initiative for the players with flat dice rolls and no modifiers to make it fair for everyone. You'd want to roll a set of initiative rolls for each combat that you expect in the game. For each combat, the GM notes down the player's initiative order. To add even more intrigue, let's leave it up to the GM to decide whether a player or an adversary takes the first turn. We want to make sure that everyone knows what the turn order is, both to help players maintain their attention and to help with tactics. For the first round though, the players don't know when each adversary will go. If you're playing online, you can probably use the initiative tracker in your favourite VTT to help you with this. I prefer playing in person, so I prefer to use cards or some other initiative tracking system. I love making things to support RPGs, so maybe I should make an initiative tracker. If you'd be interested in that, or if you're enjoying this video, let me know and subscribe so you don't miss out.
This system hits a lot of our important factors. It has an emphasis on having a defined turn order for the tactical depth that that can support because that's more important to me than intrigue. What would your favorite system be and what would you do differently? Let me know in the comments. Of course, you could use a system like this in a game with a different initiative system like D&D or Daggerheart, but results may vary and you should be careful in how it may affect game balance. I think this system would work well in games like D&D and Daggerheart though. What do you think? This video was inspired by me running a game in the Daggerheart playtest and, spoiler alert, I don't like its standard initiative system. I discuss why in this video. Initiative and some other blips aside though, the game is amazing and we can learn a lot from it to bring to other systems. You can learn more in this video. Until next time, keep on rolling and happy adventuring.